English, the solution for humanity. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. All praise is due to Allah and may the peace and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon our last Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, welcome back to another discussion about faith in a time of crisis. In this episode, I'm going to talk a little bit more about patience, an integral, a necessary concept, especially when dealing with faith during a time of crisis, when dealing uh, with a difficult situation. And I'm going to talk a little more about that time in my life, that crisis, and the concept of patience. Allah says in the glorious Quran, Wallahu ma sabirin that Allah is with those who patiently persevere. A very, very important concept to understand that when you're dealing with a crisis situation, when you're dealing with a difficulty, a tough situation, that you remember that Allah Azza wa Jal, the one who created you, is always with you. When we look to the Holy Quran to see what else Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says about patience, we read that he says, وَاسْتَعِينُ بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ And actually this is a statement. This is something in the Qur'an that I took inspiration from when I was in jail. And I remember having a translation of the Holy Qur'an, an English-Arabic translation in the Qur'an, and coming upon this verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Seek the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with patience and perseverance, and in prayer. So what could I do in that situation when I was locked away in jail? 76 days, isolation, solitary confinement, except seek the help from Allah patiently and make my salah, make my prayers. But it was really focusing on being patient with the situation that I was in, being patient with Allah knowing that He is the best of all planners, knowing that He ultimately has control over all things and that whatever happens only happens by His permission. We have to remember in all situations, especially those difficult ones, that Allah is always with us and that we should seek help only from Him, Azza wa Jal. When we go back to the Quran, we also read how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ أَمَنُوا اسْبُرُوا وَالصَّابَرُوا وَالرَّابَتُوا وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying here in, in Surah Al-Imran, the last verse, He is saying, O oh, you who believe, persevere in patience and constancy so that you may prosper. We have to hold fast to our faith in Allah, being patient in those most difficult times, because ultimately, in doing so, Allah is with us, and we then can become successful. My brothers and sisters, again, for me, during that most difficult time, I had to really rely on patience and remembering that Allah was with me in, in that difficult time. I was in a situation that was so full of uncertainty. I was locked away in prison. I was shackled. They were accusing me of these horrible things. I was being threatened with the death penalty. 
I was separated from my family, and in the beginning, I didn't even have any communication with them. I was not even allowed to contact my own family and inform them, let them know of where I was. During that time, I was fearing that my own government was stripping from me all of my rights, all of my civil liberties. I mean, I had been a chaplain down in Guantanamo Bay and seen how prisoners in Guantanamo were treated, how they had their rights stripped away, how they had been abused, even subjected to torturous treatment. The administration at that time had, had indicated that the Geneva Conventions, the international body of law for armed conflict, did not apply in Guantanamo, thereby they would strip the prisoners, the detainees in Guantanamo, all of their rights. I was facing a very, very similar situation. Didn't know what was happening. I really, really had to focus myself, focus my faith in finding patience and relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, remembering that He is the best of all planners. I remember taking inspiration from another verse in the Quran where Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, Asa'an takrahu shay'an wa huwa khayrun lakum. He says that perhaps you may hate something, you may dislike something, but in it there is much good. I found myself in a situation that I hated. I was being accused of being a traitor to my country, a terrorist, a spy. I was in a situation where I was being threatened with the death penalty. Could potentially face what some might call the gas chamber. I was separated from my family. I hated being away from my family and them not knowing where I was. I was in a situation which I did not like. But I had to remember that Allah is the best of all planners. Allah is the best of all planners. And that verily, everything that was happening to me at that time in my life was only with His permission. Asa'an takrahu shay'in wa huwa khaydun lakum. That maybe or perhaps you dislike something or you hate something, but in it there is much good. I had to reach deep inside of myself to be patient during that time, knowing that even in that harrowing situation, there had to be some good in it, because that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had willed. My brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in the Quran about patience, that He loves those who are patient. He says in the Quran, Wallahu yuhibbu sabreen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who are patient. So, we should realize and we should recognize that when we are patient, we are receiving the love of Allah. That Allah is satisfied. He loves those who when they are experiencing that difficult moment, that they turn to patience. This is a value, this is a character trait, patience, that when we become one of the patient, Allah will love us. In that very same verse from the Qur'an where He says that He loves those who are patient, the verse goes on and asks us, how many of the prophets, peace be upon them all, fought for the sake of Allah? And with them, many people of God, many people of the Lord, who were with the prophets, who fought for His Azzawajal's sake. But they never lost heart. If they met some disaster, if they met some difficulty in the way of Allah, they did not weaken. Their faith did not weaken or decrease. Nor did they give in to that situation. When Allah asks us that question, you know, how many of the prophets did that? We know that all of them were in situations that were very difficult, that they suffered calamities. It's those who were with the prophets, the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the companions of those other prophets also experienced right along with them those difficult times. But having the prophets there as role models and examples who didn't waver in faith, who didn't weaken, we find that this should be an example for us when we find ourselves in those most trying times. To be careful that our faith doesn't weaken. 
again for me when I was thrown into prison, when I was in that uh, crisis uh, where I had all of my freedoms, all of my liberties stripped away, it was an opportunity where my faith could increase. That's how I saw it. An opportunity for me to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I can say that through that time, my faith never wavered. My faith uh, was never shaken, walhamdulillah. And being a Muslim and remembering that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was someone who created me, in that situation, I became stronger. I became more of a believer and would be able to focus more of my attention on remembering Allah, on submerging myself in thicket, in making dua, in reconfirming my faith, and being mindful that surely to come would be some relief. I think we could take a break here and come back and further discuss this topic of faith in a time of crisis and focus a little bit more again on patience and maybe take a look at prophets, companions, and how they dealt with the situation of crisis, uh, relying, turning back towards patience. Images, images, and depictions, and depictions of our Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have spread around the globe. May endless blessings be upon thee. His life is being examined in the glare of the global media spotlight. It is the duty of every Muslim, every Muslim to present to the world the truth of his life and the excellence of his character. And we have not sent you, O Muhammad, except as a mercy. To the universe. To do this, you have to know your prophet. It's something that you simply can't afford to be ignorant of. Allah, send your peace on your slave Muhammad. Study the exemplary personality of our Prophet, peace be upon him, which attracts people of all faiths and nationalities in Know Your Prophet, Peace Be Upon Him, every Tuesday at 8 p.m. and repeat telecast at 8.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. The best 10 days of our life and proclaim the pilgrimage among men. They will come to thee on foot and mounted on every camel. Lean on account of journeys through deep and distant mountain highways. A unique opportunity to get closer to Allah. The upcoming series on the virtues of the first ten days of the Hijjah. La bayk Allahumma la bayk. La bayk Allahumma la bayk. La bayk la sharik la ka la bayk. La sharik la ka la bayk. Inna alhamda. Inna alhamda. Wa niyamata. Wa niyamata. La ka wa mulk. La ka wa mulk. La sharik la. Learn how we can draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during these days which are full of blessings and great rewards in the virtues of the first 10 days of Zul Hijjah every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 11 p.m. and repeat telecast at 12.30 p.m. UK on Peace TV. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, assalamu alaikum. Uh, welcome back to our discussion about faith during a time of crisis. 
focusing on the aspect of patience. As I discussed a little earlier during my time of crisis, when I was thrown in prison and served 76 days in jail, uh, being locked away, being wrongfully accused, I really had to rely on patience during that time. And in doing so, my faith increased, strengthened. But during those 76 days where I was cut off from the outer world, Alhamdulillah, I was allowed to have a copy of the Qur'an. An English-Arabic translation of the Qur'an, actually it was the Abdullah Yusuf Ali translation. This is the actual Qur'an that I had in the cell with me at the time, in those 76 days. And I've kept that Qur'an since, and now often read it like I did back in that cell. But during those 76 days, I had much time to read the Qur'an, to read the translation, to read and understand the meaning, and to read the many stories of those prophets who also relied on patience during their times of crisis. And I want to discuss some of those. Let's take a look at uh, the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. We know about the story when he was sleeping and he saw in his dream the order that he should go and then slaughter his son, sacrifice his son, Ishmael. Perhaps this can be considered a crisis for the Prophet Ibrahim because being asked, being ordered to slaughter your own son is something that might seem crazy, outrageous. And when he went to his son, when he went to Ishmael alayhi salatu wasalam, what did Ishmael say? What did his son say to the Prophet Ibrahim? He said, Ya Abati, if'al ma tu'mir, satajaduni insha'Allah min as Ishmael, he said, he said, O oh Father, do as you have been ordered, meaning go ahead and slaughter me. You shall find me insha'Allah amongst those who are patient. So here Ishmael, is telling his father, go ahead and do what you saw in that dream. Go ahead and do what Allah ordered you to do. And if that means sacrificing me, sacrificing my life, then you will find me amongst those who are patient. So here we see not only the Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, having to be patient with the situation where Allah is asking him to sacrifice his own son, but we also see how Ishmael responded, saying that he would be of those who would be patient and accept the will of Allah that he be slaughtered. And then, alhamdulillah, the blessing came where Allah sent the ram so that he would not have to actually slaughter his son. That was a test from Allah. Allah was, was putting the Prophet Ibrahim and you can say also Ishmael in a test, in a trial, in which they both, as you see from uh, that story, relied on their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in being patient. Another story from the life of the Prophet Ibrahim, when he was chastising his people about worshipping the idols. What did the people do? They become angry, right? And they said, throw him into the fire. They threw the Prophet Ibrahim, alayhi salatu wasalam, into the fire. The Prophet Ibrahim, he had to rely and trust Allah that he would protect him. That he, azza wa jal, would protect him. And verily Allah did so. Making the fire cool and not allowing that fire to harm the Prophet Ibrahim. Not allowing those hot flames to have any harmful effect or punishment on the Prophet Ibrahim. And he was protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his state of patience, steadfastness and perseverance. That's just another example from the stories of Abraham or Ibrahim. We could also look to the story of the Prophet Yusuf, alayhi salatu wasalam, peace be upon him, where the Prophet Yusuf, 
was thrown into the well as a young boy by his own jealous brothers. The brothers of Prophet Joseph, of Prophet Yusuf, were jealous over him because they knew he was the favorite of their father. They would throw him into the well and, and go back to their father and say that he had been eaten by the wolves. Yusuf is sitting in this well, down at the bottom, not knowing what's going to happen to his life. But he had an, an inkling in his heart, as it says in the Quran, that Allah gave him this feeling that things would be okay, that one day he would have the opportunity to tell his brothers the truth. The Prophet Joseph, the Prophet Yusuf, alayhi salatu was was patient in that time of crisis, sitting in the bottom of that well. Of course, we know that the, the caravan would come by and, and find Joseph in the well, and then he would be taken and later become a, an honorable advisor to the king. When we continue to read about the story of Yusuf, we find the incident in which the king's wife would seduce the prophet Yusuf such that he would resist out of, uh, out of taqwa, out of fear uh, for Allah. And in that, the king's wife would then accuse the prophet Yusuf of assaulting her, in which the king would then throw the prophet Yusuf into jail, throw him into prison, wrongfully accused. The prophet Joseph in that situation also had to remain steadfast in his faith. In another time of crisis, the Prophet Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam had to remain patient. And he actually spent some years in jail being wrongfully accused of assaulting the king's wife. But in those years as he stayed patient and became known as uh, one who could interpret dreams, interpreting the dreams of other prisoners, and then ultimately interpreting the dream of the king, uh, indicating that uh, years of prosperity would be followed by years of famine, would, would also then help the king to restore honor to the Prophet Yusuf. But in that time of crisis where the Prophet Yusuf was in jail, wrongfully accused, serving time for something he didn't do, he remained steadfast and patient, uh, and remain faithful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in that time. When we look to the important seerah of the last prophet, the seal of all prophets, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we see how he had to display patience in different times. Like in times of battle. During the battle of Badr, for example, when Muslims were outnumbered more than three to one. The number of Muslims at the Battle of Badr was only somewhere about 300. And the Arab tribes, the pagan tribes who they would fight, numbered in the thousand. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even sent to the Prophet Muhammad angels to assist uh, in that fight. But it was ultimately the Prophet Muhammad's steadfastness trust in Allah that things would be victorious and that he would ultimately remain patient in that, in that situation where it looked like there, was, uh, there might not be a way that 300 soldiers could overcome 1,000. We know from the Sira and the history, Muslims were victorious in the Battle of Badr. We look to a contrasting battle in which the Prophet Muhammad himself was even wounded after a defeat, and that was the Battle of Uhud. We see from the Sira that during the Battle of Uhud, the undisciplined Muslims who came down off the mountain, uh, the archers, before they were supposed to, and then we, we, we saw the enemy Arab troops double back, come around the mountain, and force the Muslims in defeat. Here we see that after this defeat, no doubt the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had to be patient in that situation, that trial and tribulation, experiencing defeat, just experiencing his own 
wounds being, being hurt in battle. He had to be patient. And actually, the very next day, the Muslims returned to the battlefield and the Arab tribes even then saw fit to retreat. But that was a lesson where we saw the steadfastness of the Muslims, even in one of their defeats. Well, alhamdulillah, we see from the examples of the prophets, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Prophet Ibrahim and Ishmael, Prophet Yusuf, that they remain steadfast, that they remain patient in the most trying times. It's a lesson for us. They are the role models that when we find ourselves in uh, difficult times, in tough situations, in situations of despair, that we should recognize we should be patient with what Allah has planned and that ultimately Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send us relief. My brothers and sisters, we're going to stop here and continue later with another episode dealing with faith in a time of crisis uh, and move on to another aspect and expound further on not only my own personal trial of, of being wrongfully accused and suffering through a crisis, but other, another aspect that uh, we can look at in dealing with this important subject of faith during a time of crisis. Message by Dr. Zakir. Old Age Home. Al Quran, Surah Al Isra, chapter number 17, verses number 23 and 24 says, Your Lord has decreed that you worship none but Him and that you be kind to parents. Whether one or both of them attain old age in your life, say not a word of contempt. Do not say oof to them, nor repel them but address them in terms of honor and out of kindness lower to them the wing of humility and say my lord bestow on them your mercy even as they cherished me in childhood there is no place for old age home in islam be stevie the solution for humanity oh. The value of money in the hereafter will be measured by its proper use in the present. According to the glorious Quran, one of the best ways to use your money is to spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spreading his message of Islam. Peace TV is a non-profit Islamic satellite television channel that is primarily dedicated for just that cause, the proper presentation of Islam. It's a great choice to invest in it and a golden opportunity to purify your wealth in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Support Peace TV. Send your zakat and donations to IRFI Al Ryan Bank, 47 Calthorpe Road, Birmingham, UK, B151TH. Pound account number 01132301. IBAN 